Welcome to my April 2024 update on the best savings accounts here in the UK. I'll take you through the highest paying accounts for everyone. Plus, I'll let you know some news and updates that will be affecting some of you as new and existing customers, including the new British savings bonds that have been launched this week. But to kick things off, uh, just let's remind ourselves what's happened with inflation and the base rate, because they're really important in informing what happens with our savings rates. When inflation actually fell, it's now at 3.4%, which was slightly lower than people were expecting. Um, and that kind of suggests to us that things are moving in the right direction for there to be some cuts to the base rate at some point this year. You know, those cuts to base rates are good for borrowing, but they're not good for savings. And that is why we have seen over the last few months, uh, all those different cuts across the peak, really, since last September. Probably speaking, we'll talk a look at it in a minute. Rates have been going down. But the Bank of England chose at their meeting in March to keep rates where they were for now, that 5.25% base rate. And the expectation is we're still going to see some cuts this year, but maybe not quite as early as anticipated. And that has a bit of an impact on some short term fixes, which we'll come back to in a minute. But that's where we are. No change, pretty much. You can still very, very, very easily beat the rate of inflation with your savings, which is really important to be doing if you are not. If your savings are currently lower than 3.4%, you are actually losing money in real terms. So it's well worth having a look. Best options out there and moving your money to a higher paying account. Even if you're getting higher than that, way over inflation, it's still worth seeing if you're getting the best possible rate that you can. Let's have a quick look at how things have changed since last month as well. Uh, this is just the top rates time of recording this versus when I did it a month ago versus where we did it a quarter ago at the start of the year, just to give you a sense of where things are and where we really are seeing that movement. The big cuts happening this month has been down to those easy, limited and notice access accounts, those variable rate accounts, some big drops there. So as we'll see in a minute, the best easy access account with no restrictions and low limits is now not 5.06%. It was 5.12%, whereas a month ago and a year ago, it was 5.22%. So we are seeing those drops, similar drops on limited access, similar drops on 90-day uh, notice. In fact, larger drops on those other accounts happening there. Uh, changes to regular savers as well, I'll take you through later on in terms of the open to all accounts. Big drop there from 7% to 5.5%. And, and we have, as I said, uh, in fixes, this is the only bit where there may be a little bit of an increase in some cases. The six-month fix is up a little bit. Uh, based on where we were uh, both a month ago and at the start of the year. The nine-month fix is actually uh, up a little bit on where we were at the start of the year, but, but down on where we were a month ago. But there's not too much change in fixes. We'll come back to that later on. And ISA says, I'm not going to focus massively on ISA today. I'll give you a quick update on the top paying accounts. But because we're at the end of the financial year, a lot of the accounts have been withdrawn. Um, so they're kind of it kind of distorts the figures there slightly, actually how much rates have changed. But you can see... Uh, easy access ISAs, that has gone up, which is technically a limited access ISA. That's shot up a huge amount, now 5.17% compared to the start of the year, 5.08%. So some good sort of improvements going on broadly there. Uh, so let's have a look at some of those best options, shall we? And let's talk first of all about uh, easy access accounts. As I said, there's been a big drop uh, across the board there and what the best ones you can get. I've been saying this is going to happen for a while. We know these cuts are coming along. They're the one areas which have stayed strong when everybody else has been dropping. Yes, new customer accounts have been falling, but they aren't the only ones falling as well. And there have been some cuts announced for existing customers as well, which you might have one of these accounts because I've spoken about them in the past in previous updates. The big one is Santander. It's a popular eSaver account, which was available last autumn, 5.2%, which at the time was massive. Yes, since then, a few other places offered something similar, but that was a great one to get. A lot of people got it, really popular. That they've announced will drop to 4.2% on the 20th of May this year. That's a massive drop, a whole percentage point down uh, when this rate drop comes along. So don't do anything with this just yet because you don't know what's going to happen with other accounts. But it's worth knowing that, that is going to be falling. But also Chase have joined the likes of Chip and Crew in making the rate that they offer a tracker rate, something that follows the Bank of England base rate. So it's staying where it is, it's still 4.1%, but it will basically mean that when the base rate does fall later this year, it will fall by that amount. And each time it drops, it will drop. So you are guaranteed that your rate will fall if you have money with Chase, as well as I say Chip Crew, and there are other tracker ones out there. But this is interesting, you know, they weren't following the rate, they weren't tracking the rate when it was going up, were they? But they're very happy to give you all those cuts on the way back down. Again, I wouldn't necessarily do anything just yet, 
uh, because we've got to wait for the rate cuts to come along. If you're happy with that account, I mean, you can definitely beat Chase right now. That 4.1% easily beaten, but it's worth knowing about it. Uh, it's worth with these cuts. It does make it slightly more appealing. When I last month, I told you about the trading 212, 5.2% paying account. And you might be thinking, well, that's way over the odds of the best options right now. Definitely top of the table. And it is the highest paying one without any kind of restrictions. But remember, if you haven't already, check out my content on that account because this is not a pure standard savings account. You are still investing that money. Very, very, very low risk, but there's still the risk associated with that. But more so, it doesn't come with that financial services compensation scheme protection. Again, should be absolutely fine, but there is that risk associated with it. And since you can currently get a limited access ISA, and we'll talk more about this later on from Plum paying 5.17%, unless you need to access your money a lot, that difference is so negligible, I'd go with uh, the ISA. And also, you know, I know you can only put up to 20K into there, but for most people, that's absolutely fine. And again, the only restriction here is those three uh, access limits uh, every single year. Um, so let's have a look, shall we, at some of those top, top, top paying accounts out there. And let's start off with, I say this every month when I do these updates, I'm not going to be uh, taking you through every single account that's available. I'm just telling you the top paying ones. So a lot of people say, what about this? What about that? They are accounts which either weren't at the top of the table when recording this, uh, or maybe they came along later on. So uh, you can head as ever to becleveryouryourcash.com forward slash savings. That's where myself and the team every day we're updating these best buy tables where you get a longer list of options and you'll get an updated list as well if you're looking at this two days, three days time to see what is current at the top. So these current account link savers are still the top paying ones. Santander's Edge Saver will give you 7% on the first £4,000, but only for one year. Of course, any money above £4,000, the rate doesn't really 7% because it's not really compounding if you're taking the money out of there. But that's the top one. Uh, Ulster Bank, they have a 5.2% variable account. Uh, you can put a lot more money in there, up to a million pounds if you wanted to. Um, so if you have an Ulster current account or get one, you could access that. And Barclays still has that Blue Rewards Rainy Day Saver, which was top of the table for years and years and years, been a bit for forgotten, but it's starting to now suddenly become a lot more appealing if you have a Barclays current account, if you're willing to add the Blue Rewards thing and do the hoops that have to be jumped around so a couple of direct debits paying money in every single month paying a fee which you'll get back but then need to claim it back again not a huge problem but i would avoid it still for now based on the other accounts but it's starting to be sort of back up there 5.12 percent are one of the more interesting options there are also some uh, loyalty accounts available to people uh this one is from the biggest one i should say is from skipped and bill society 5.5 percent if you have access to that that is a really, really hard rate to beat. Uh, and again, though there are limits within this one, a maximum of £3,000, you're possibly better off uh, going with the uh, uh, one from Kahoot, which pays 5.2%, uh, but this one on, only on balances of up to £3,000. You don't need any loyalty for that. You don't need any previous existing uh, accounts. You can open it up as part of Santander. That one, top of the table for pure, easy access. But again, that limit of £3,000 when we go below that, you're looking at these options of post office money, 5.06%. Although again, there is a bonus for 12 months on this one. Synergy Bank, 5.01%. Again, a bonus for the first year. So both those accounts will drop down after 12 months. Uh, and then we have Hampshire Trust Bank, 5% and Close Brothers, 5%. There are not many accounts paying more than 5% right now. Uh, the Train212 account I mentioned to you before. Limited access accounts though. These are where you can't actually access your cash. Again, a few here over 5% if you want to go with these providers over the others, 5.05 for Paragon, 5.01 uh, for Virgin Money, 5.01 for Skipton Bill and Society. But again, remember, I spoke about those ISAs. Currently, cash ISAs are paying more than this, and we'll touch on those top ones later, later on. Uh, also, quick shout out to Notice Accounts. There are a couple of uh, shorter ones which have come along. Monument has a 45-day notice account at 5.2%, which isn't bad. You use variable rate, but if you put your money in there, you can't access it for 45 days, but in an emergency, that's possibly not too bad if you've got some money elsewhere. It's something to consider. Obviously, it can change. Uh, and then above that, you know, you are able to beat those easy access accounts with those different notice options. Two months from Monument, 5.27. Three months with Investec, 5.25. Four months with Synergy, 5.2. And six months with Market Harbour at 5.45%. Okay, let's quick look at fixed rate accounts, the best ones for April as well. But before we do that, I want to talk about this new British savings bond. This was announced at the budget last month, although we didn't know how much it's going to pay. It's come out today on the 3rd of April, and we know it will pay 4.15% for the three-year term. Now, 4.15% uh, is not amazing, 
Uh, it can be beaten by a number of other providers. Uh, top of the table right now for a three year fix, 4.67% from Zenith. You've got Oxbury, Alrayan, Close Brothers, Hampshire and Secure Trust Bank all offering uh, a similar rate as well. And that basically means, why would you do this? Why would you go for essentially half a percentage point difference uh, to put your money with this British savings bond? Now, other than kind of some misguided sort of sense that you're being patriotic, it really doesn't deliver anything at all. Uh, the minimum you could put in is £500. The maximum you could put in is £1 million. The only real kind of difference from this to the other savings accounts is that you will be protected up to that full £1 million uh, if something was to go wrong because it's backed by the government, by the Treasury. Of course, if the government collapsed, uh, you wouldn't get the money, but then we're, much worse things would be happening if that was the situation. When I mean the government collapsed, I don't mean just like the Tory, current Tory government, I mean society. Uh, so it doesn't really make too much of a difference uh, if, unless you have a really, really, really large sum of money. Um, but I would say, do you really need more than the £85,000 uh, per institution that other banks will allow, which will cover you for? I would say probably not. Okay, so you'll be looking at having uh, either splitting that money up over those different banks for a, bit, for a better rate or looking at doing something different with your money, such as investing it, putting in your pension, overpaying your mortgage, all those kind of things. It's rare that you need so much money in cash from the same institution, particularly over a three year fix. If you were going to have a lot of money, you might want to sort of stagger it. So some in a one year, some in a two year, some in a three year, some in a four year, some in a five year, something like that. Because remember, you will get charged uh, tax on the interest you earn. So if you have large amounts of money, you're going to be over your personal savings allowances. This particular NSNI British Savings Bond does give you two options though. You can choose to have all the interest paid at the end or you can uh, choose to have it paid monthly. Uh, in which case, how which one of you choose does impact when you'll pay tax. But anyway, that's what it is. I'm not too excited about it. I'm just telling you about it just so you have the information. So let's have a look at the other fixed rate accounts. Six months, 5.2% from Secure Trust Bank. Uh, nine month, uh, four, 5.1% from Charter Savings Bank via Hargreaves Lansdowne. 12 month fix, this has dropped recently 5.2% uh, from uh, MBNA. You could get around 525 earlier in the week. Uh, 18 months, Synergy Bank 4.8%, although Tesco have just also introduced one at the same rate, although you need a higher minimum deposit for that. Two years, IFAS, they've been around for a while, 5.1%. Uh, three years, we just spoke about there, Zenith Bank 4.67%. Uh, four years IS Bank via Raisin 4.5 and five years Secure Trust Bank 4.55%. They are your best fixed rate options right now. Okay, let's talk about regular savers. I already told you that there's going to be cuts to the ones which are available to everyone. Uh, and this was from Gatehouse Bank. Gatehouse was paying 7% uh, variable to anyone. You didn't have to have an account with them already, an existing account. Uh, that has been dropped to 5.3% now. So the best account if you are uh, not wanting to get a regular saver that's connected to a current account or as a loyalty uh, product because you've already been with a place for a while is Halifax at 5.5%, which is good. You know, it's better than you're going to get in most of the other types of accounts we've already mentioned, but it's not amazing. However, that is fixed, which is worth knowing about. Uh, but what does that mean at the top of the tables? Well, First Direct is still top 7% fixed. You do need the current account for that one. There is incidentally a switching deal on right now. If you haven't already seen my content, on that switching deal or read the analysis of that, do check that out. So you can get £175 for switching. You can get another sort of 35 quid ish by going via a cashback site. And then you can open up this regular saver uh, and get in 7% every month fixed for a year. Uh, then we have Cooperative Bank, same rate, but variable. And you do need a current account for those. Nationwide, I told you last month how that had dropped from 8% to 6.5%, but it's still a decent option if you have a nationwide current account. And the Club Lloyd, still a big fan of that one, 6.25% AER fixed. I've just uh, had mine just finished for the year. So I've opened up a new one to lock in that rate just in case, as I told you last month and the month before, we do see the new issues of these rates, uh, these accounts drop as uh, we see more cuts coming along. Haven't been too many cuts yet to those fixed regular savers and those variable regular savers, but I anticipate we will get more of those very soon. And there is also uh, some loyalty ones out there. Still the top one there is Skipped and Beyond Society, which pays 7%, which is good. But again, you have to have been a member of that Beyond Society on or before the 11th of January 2024. And a new one's come out from the Coventry Beyond Society, 6.75% uh, variable rate uh, regular saver. Again, a loyalty one. Again, a decent option out there, but you can beat them. I would definitely focus on the 7% ones uh, from the other places before you look at these ones, which are really harder to get. If you're lucky to get them, great. If you can't, there's nothing you can do about it. Now, finally, let's quickly talk about ISIS. And I said I'm not going to cover them in a huge amount of detail in this particular update because I will be doing probably next week in the new financial year uh, a better, bigger look at what is available to you. But if you are looking to put your money aside 
uh, in the next few days before the, the year finishes, these are your best options. Uh, we have got easy access, pure easy access, no real restrictions, chip 5.1%. Then we have uh, limited access is plum 5.17%. That rate is boosted for a year, so it will drop after a year and a maximum of three withdrawals, but uh, best one out there for general, any easy access, ISA or not, I would say. Uh, then we have the one year Castle Trust Bank 5.05%. Two years, UBL 4.7. Three years, Close Brothers 4.4%. Four years, UBL again 4.05%. And five years, 4.16% UBL. And then the lifetime uh, ISA from Moneybox 4.4%, although that has that bonus for a year. So actually, if you are going for one of these, I'd probably look at slightly lower 4.3% from Tembu uh, because that one is variable rate, but it's not going to be necessarily drop so much after 12 months. Again, be clever with your cash.com forward slash savings is where you will find all the options for all the different types of savings accounts I've gone through today. So there you go. That is a whistle stop tour of April's top savings accounts. My name is Andy Webb. Thanks for watching. Check out these videos here for more ways to make the most of your savings.